In this video we study auctions, in particular the second price auction. Assume you want to sell a house. Since you want to achieve a good price, you organize an auction. Let's see our five potential buyers, we also call these players. One classic auction type is the so-called sealed bid auction. In this auction, every player puts a binding offer into an envelope. We gather all the envelopes and reveal the bids inside. In this example, Miss Red put in the highest bid, and wins the auction. Her bid is also the price she pays. What's wrong with such a sealed bid auction? Well, Miss Red might suffer from severe buyer's remorse. She bid considerably more than anybody else, and she would have won the auction even if she bid much less. So she could have saved a lot of money. The sealed bid auction is a lot like playing poker because a player does not know how other players value the house, and what price they might offer. This strategic thinking is complicated and potentially nerve-wracking. So let's try another auction type, but first let's bring all players back. Instead of bids, we now see the real valuations of all players. The value of a player is the maximum price they are willing to pay for the house. If the price is higher than the value of a player, the player stops bidding. In a sealed bid auction, the bid is often lower than the actual valuation, since the players try to get away with a lower price than their valuation. Knowing the secret values of everybody, we can show what would happen in the classic English auction. In the English auction, the seller starts with a low price, possibly even zero. Then the price increases. At some point the price surpasses the value of Mr. Beige. At this point, the house is not interesting anymore to Mr. Beige, and he drops out of the auction. As the price rises, more and more players will drop out over time, because the current price is above their valuation of the house. The auction stops as soon as the player with the second highest valuation drops out, because the current price is above their value. Only one single player remains in the game, and it's again Miss Red. However, in the English auction, Miss Red never revealed her secret valuation, and Miss Red only pays the current price, which is the valuation of Mr. Blue. In this case, Miss Red does not have any buyer's remorse at all, because she knows that she paid the absolute minimum price to get the house. The problem with the English auction is that it is slow. On the internet, millions of auctions are being executed every second. Whenever somebody searches on Google, there is an auction that determines who can display an ad and for what price. In these auctions, speed matters. But luckily, there is yet another type of auction, known as the second price auction, which is just made for these millions of small auctions. In a second price auction, every player simply announces their secret value. Once the bids are in, we award the good to the highest bidder. But here is the twist. The winning player only has to pay the second highest bid. In other words, the outcome is exactly the same as in the English auction, but the process is much simpler. Let's be a bit more formal for a moment, and show that the second price auction incentivizes all players to reveal their true valuation. Here we have our five players, and let's assume that their bid is equal to their value. Can a player gain something by not revealing their true value? Let's first look at Mr. Blue. If Mr. Blue lowers his bid, nothing will change for him, because Miss Red is still winning the auction. If Mr. Blue increases his bid, his outcome will also not change. This is already silly of Mr. Blue, because one should never bid higher than the valuation. Bidding higher than the value is like bidding more than $20 for a $20 bill. Anyway, only if Mr. Blue bids more than Miss Red, something will change. With such a high bid, Mr. Blue would actually win the auction. But Mr. Blue would not be happy about it, since he now seriously went over budget, and paid much more than how he actually values the house. The other interesting case is Miss Red. Again, if Miss Red bids higher than her value, something is seriously wrong with her. At least in Miss Red's case, this would not have any negative consequences, as she still wins and she still pays the second highest bid. If Miss Red lowers her bid, nothing changes. She still wins, and she still pays the blue price. Only if she goes below the blue bid, the outcome changes. In this case however, Miss Red will not win the auction anymore. She is now worse off than when bidding her true valuation. Now she gets nothing. If she instead bids truthfully, she gets the good for a lower price than her valuation. This completes our analysis. We showed that players cannot win anything by not bidding their true value. So in a second price auction it's best to truthfully bid your secret valuation. This is why the second price auction is known as a truthful mechanism. 
the second price auction has the same winner and the same price as an English auction, but is as fast as a sealed bid auction. Mechanism design is in general a fascinating area in game theory. The idea is to come up with a procedure that provides some nice guarantees. Usually a mechanism designer would offer incentives, for example payments or subsidies. Or the mechanism designer might threaten with punishments, for instance fines or even prison. Using incentives we can create a mechanism which for instance has a low price of anarchy. Let us summarize. In this video, we presented three classic types of auctions. First the sealed bid auction, then the English auction, and finally the second price auction, which is a hybrid of the other two. Then we quickly showed that the second price auction is a truthful mechanism. We would like to mention that hundreds of different auction types exist, for instance auctions where players do not bid on single items but on bundles of items. Thanks for watching this video.